Hello guys and welcome to my new series of City Skylines. Welcome to Project Monaco. Brand new series starting today. And wow has this been a project in the making for so many months. It's been extremely hard to keep under wraps I must say but I am so excited to get this going. Project Monaco is going to be a very unique and different City Skylines series, not yet attempted in a YouTube series, but I certainly cannot do this alone. With the support of over 50 creators currently on board from the City Skylines workshop community, together we will be taking on a recreation of Monaco. Now I've certainly had this recreation in mind for a very, very long time in fact, but what's held me back is the lack of assets available on the workshop that suit this region. And from memory, there's not really a Mediterranean series that I can recall that's really been tackled yet, certainly not around the Monaco area. So with that in mind, I started talking to a couple of creators about working together to create some Mediterranean assets for the series. And from there, my word did the word spread. And as of today, like I said, we are sitting at around 50 creators on board with some creators creating small generic props, others creating huge, unique, highly detailed buildings, and of course the map, theme, and loot. And not just that, but what is great is all of these assets will be open to the public, to you guys, so you can also create your very own Mediterranean builds at long last. And with that said, I'm absolutely honored to have so many talented creators on board, giving up their free time, working with me to create what I hope will become a very exciting new series to see us through the winter months and into the new year. So in this first episode we're going to kick off with a little look over the extent of this project, the number of challenges to overcome and take a look in more detail at the official Monaco map, theme and loot. And if you're unaware of where Monaco is located, well Monaco firstly is a sovereign city-state, country, micro-state located on the French Riviera in Western Europe. So in summary, the very south side of France. And one thing I wasn't aware of, but Monaco has an area coverage of 2 km squared with a population of around 40,000. Now that makes it the second smallest but most densely populated sovereign state in the world. So that's going to make some challenges when we come to building the city ourselves, trying to create that much density in a small area is going to be some challenge. So just looking around at this video, you can certainly see how compacted Monaco is, but also how luxurious and how bright and colorful it is. There's lots of pinks, there's lots of oranges and yellows on these buildings, and it just looks like it's a film location. And not only that, but the architecture of the buildings themselves is really inspiring, and I think that's why so many creators got on board as well, because they are so beautiful, so different, so unique, different types of buildings which aren't, like I said, on the workshop at the moment. But what I love best about Monaco is there's so many different sections to it. You've got the area with the beautiful casinos, you've got the premier tourist destinations, you've got the location of the Grand Prix here, you've got Monaco Football Club. There's so much going on in such a small area that each different section is going to be like a new build, which is what I love about this particular build itself. However, there's a lot to love, but there's also a lot to hate. The interesting areas for us to tackle is gonna be, of course, the elevation and different location of heights. To place all these buildings in, it's not going to be easy. It's gonna really push the game's mechanics and, of course, my abilities to the absolute maximum. But there'll be a few clever techniques along the way that I can show you guys that how I personally do so. And again, we'll have to be very careful with the prop limit. Whilst I want to make this as detailed as possible, it's still going to have to be something that I keep my eye on, and we have to complete it as best as we can. So I hope that little introduction will give you some idea on what the plans are for Project Monaco, what it's all about, and what is in store for you. I am extremely excited for this new series. It's been, like I say, a project in the making for so long now with so many surprises in store you don't want to miss an episode so if you haven't already hit that like button to show your support and that you want to see more and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel so you don't miss episode two 
So now, as promised, let's move on to the map. And what better way to do so than speak to the creator himself? Let's start with number one podcast of the series with Mr. Miyagi. Firstly, Mr. Miyagi, it's a great pleasure to have you on board in the City Skylines new project, Project Monaco. Great to be here. So the first question really is, what made you want to join Project Monaco and, of course, recreate a Monaco map that you've already done so well? <laughs> well, I think it started when uh, somebody came along and said, hey, do you mind if I use your map? And I said, hey, you can have the original map. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> we gave you the file and uh, couldn't quite use the file. So I said, okay, well, let me do you a height map and you want anything extra because that height map isn't so great anymore. So I gave you the height map and then there was another issue. <laughs> and then it was like, ah, hell, I'll just do this. <laughs> so I kind of, kind of stumbled into it. <laughs> well, it was one of those things. I mean, as I said to you before, I, I first tried to. Well, actually, let's go back to the very beginning. The very beginning mm -hmm. was when I first saw your map on the workshop. And I always remember the tagline of... I think it's something along the lines of um, this is the biggest challenge of City Skylines who wants to take it on along those lines and uh, <laughs> ever since I saw that I thought to myself I wouldn't mind trying it out to be honest but that, that yeah. was a good sort of what a year and a half ago when you put that up in the workshop and obviously then that was when we had none of these amazing mods such as Move It etc and I think trying to recreate it back then would have been a lot more difficult than perhaps it is today. Oh yeah, yeah. I had to when I made a city on it. I had to hide everything, trees and bushes, all the ugly parts. <laughs> <laughs> that was all we could use. Where we didn't have any mods. Well, that's it. Hardly any mods. Hardly any sort of custom buildings back then as well. It was, it was all mm -hmm. pretty much default and all the expansions from uh, from the producers, really, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. From there, I mean, I as I said to you previously, I, I tried to create the map myself. You gave me the um, the sort of the, the sort of push along to try and do it myself and I realised I had no ability to do that myself and uh, <laughs> and luckily someone I know called Mr Miyagi gave me a helping hand so uh... <laughs> yeah no problem it actually got me interested because it's the one map and theme I have, haven't redone that I really wanted to get done uh, okay so, yes so I was like oh yeah maybe I'll do that <laughs> My next question is going to be, what were the biggest challenges for the map creation this time around? What did you dif do differently and what sort of new techniques have you tried and sort of, you know, built on from the last map? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah since then I've learned um, how to do more accurate, true-to-life scale and, uh, um, you know, before it was just, bah, I throw this into the program Wilbur, do the thing and that it looks like Monaco enough <laughs> <laughs> but uh, since then I've learned and become a lot more particular about making it um, accurate um, so but also I would took into consideration what you had mentioned was that the Monaco that I made is actually a little taller the mountains are a little taller than um, than they would normally be um, to give like that sort of it, it looks visually uh, a lot better yeah. so what I tried had to do is go in between the two so um, the area is uh, actually a little bit leaves you a little more space than normal normally it's 18 kilometers square but it, I gave it 16 because with the way cities works it's a lot harder to get all of that squished onto that uh, landscape and have the uh, um, you know the vanilla streets yeah, yeah. actually fit um, so I used a height map um, at that scale and then instead of um, using Wilbur to expand the height of everything um, I had it do the natural elevation of topography and then uh, so that so that when you make the city on this new map you will have a lot less problem mm. of trying to fit things um, and then I took the uh, the mountains and just lifted them up so it looks visually the similar very similar to the original map but it's actually a lot easier to build on definitely I think that's always the dif difficult thing when you're building these sort of um, mm -hmm. these sort of maps because you need to also take in consideration the limits of the game and you know where you, the right. sort of height terrain of what you can actually build on realistically and the map mm -hmm. and the creation you've done is perfect like you say you've got the nice sort of flat but still rising sort of middle land where all the buildings gonna be but then you've got the um, the lovely mm -hmm. mountain 
scenery setting in the background as well. Mm. So this is obviously a very huge map and I'm only using a very small part of it being Monaco. Did that sort of change the way you detailed the rest of the actual map itself? Um, although, yeah, I, I do have the area in Monaco proper as, you know, pretty highly detailed. Um, mm. But uh, often, even with a detailed map, um, I'll leave a lot of the area free um, mm. of heavy detailing. And the reason for that is, and maybe just, you know, a river with some nice detail or a waterfall, just little things so that people can get an idea of what they can do with it. Um, and then they make the choice as to whether they want to completely plaster the entire mountainside with Avanya's cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> Which would take up all of their building allotment, probably. But um, but you know, it just give it as an example to, of something to use, and people are free to cut it out completely, um, or you know, just find inspiration from it. Or I, I think that's the best thing with a game that's so individual as to give people as much freedom as possible. So. Hmm. Oh, definitely, yeah. And I think even though you, you know, you say you've done a bit more detailing in the Monica area, even looking around the map itself, you can still see it's, you know, very well detailed with the height maps and obviously those uh, roads and junctions and highways mm. you um, you place so carefully by hand as well, which look yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's fun driving on them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's um, yeah. This time I did a little bit more attention to making everything. Uh, realistic so like as it is in the cities or uh, the, cities, the roads are um, yeah. put down um, because before I was like ah, I'm getting tired oh, I'll just fudge it and here we go that looks like it kind of <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so yeah I paid a lot more attention to getting the roads and everything right because as soon as I finished well finished my uh, Monaco city from before hmm. I was not very satisfied because um, it was difficult to build on, of course. So I had, and I also, but in, at the same time, I couldn't make it look like Monaco exactly. So, yeah, you know, I think this is going to be a fun build to redo. Oh, definitely, definitely. In terms of um, your sort of top three areas of the map, what was the most enjoyable parts you 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 know you had enjoyed creating? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Well, definitely the the castle so i think that's the um oh i forget the name oh, well it doesn't matter you'll <laughs> see it right away when you, <laughs> yes. when you start your game it's right in front of you on and the little hilltop exactly where the palace and everything is yeah um rock of monaco that's what it is um and uh it, i think that's a good thing to have very highly decorated anyway because when uh you know when i had my city and i was looking at it and it, it's just always in your face <laughs> yes so so to make that area and if you pay a lot of attention to making the harbor as a player um all of that area is going to be look fantastic because um that really is a central focus point um i spend a lot less attention and of course people can build there if they want but a lot less attention on the on the high plateau um there's plenty of area if you want to put like an industrial area or something that you don't want to look at all the time that's a good place to put it hmm. um i did enjoy remaking the provencal i think is the name of the highway um yes yeah it's it's wild to drive through because you go you know you're driving you see this amazing view you look down and way down there is the ocean and then top <laughs> that's it yeah bright light Oh, look at that view! Top. <laughs> so you do that hit and repeat that for several times. That's it, and especially the nighttime view as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we had um, tunnel. Uh, we, I don't think we had a tunnel mod um, because normally you can't make tunnels in Map mm. Editor. But uh, Bloody Pe Penguin made a mod for that, so I think that's. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that wasn't possible before. Mm. Yeah. I think I remember you saying it wasn't possible, but um, now, mm -hmm. yeah, due to another amazing mod by another creator, we're able exactly. to do so, which is perfect. <laughs> okay, so um, I mean, another question I had for you, um, mostly because of the beautiful cliff faces we were given by Ivania for mm -hmm. this project. 
Do you see a lot more props and decals going down on map creation now prior to obviously what it was like six months ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're already seeing some really great map uh, creators um, making really detailed uh, maps with all kinds of... They, they spend so much time putting in decoration and, and uh, natural areas. And it, it's way more than I will ever do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I've done a few like uh, Paradise Reef and Fjordland, but that is that that's a huge amount of work. Um, so I think they're already really getting into it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really happy to see other people taking, you know, making some breaking the balance of what we can do with map making. Oh, definitely. And I think the more amazing props and sort of assets we get that can go into the map prior to it being launched, I think are going to become a lot more popular now as well because it just makes that, just makes it look that much, you know, that more realistic view as well. Especially mm -hmm. if all these, we've got all these amazing trees already from P. Delmo and Mr. Mason, etc. Mm -hmm. But, you know, having everything else on top of that as well is just going to create a sort of lifelike sort of map before you even begin plopping down your, your roads and your buildings. Exactly. And they, they also, when it comes to these assets, they, they're they doing some really great stuff, the uh, creators themselves, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all love the little um, rock, the decoration rocks that Al came up with. Yes. And then Avanya um, has been able to also make those, they're, they're buildings actually, her cliffs and rocks, they're uh, officially buildings in the game. Um, so what that means, why that's good, is that when you back away, unlike a prop, you're still going to see that cliff face yes. or that rock. So you have that and then you have others who are making prop versions of that same thing. So it's like back and forth. Um, and the reason a prop version is good is because you can put it in the water and it's not going to displace the water. Yes. So yeah. the, you have the, the, the world is your oyster if you're wanting to make a map or use these creations by others. Oh, definitely, yeah, I totally agree with that. So creating the map probably means you spent as much time studying every single aspect of Monaco, such as I have. What are you going to find the most enjoyable features for me to actually build on the city itself? Um, yeah, I think it would be... Uh, what I like is going down to first-person view when I have you know, everything looking nice. And to be able to do that and go, I remember that place. <laughs> it's been, well, it's been twenty years. Yeah, twenty years since I've been there. Um, so, but it has, probably hasn't changed much. But it's it's kind of neat to go uh, into a simulated city of one you've actually seen and check, go around and, and reminisce. So that's it. Yeah. So it's kind of neat. But I'd I'd like I'd really be interested in seeing the the. Rock of Monaco at the palace and all of that, and also the the area right around Monte Carlo, um, the center spot. That's it, and I think as you've probably seen, and everyone else will know by now, we've got so many amazing creators on board mm. that um, these assets they're building for us and these props are obviously built as the, the actual unit, the actual one by one models in, in real life. Mm -hmm. So it's going to really make the the build, I hope, feel a lot more realistic and. Um, Hopefully, sort of tidy up some of those loose ends that aren't, you know, some of the some of the parts in the actual game, uh, the mechanics are gonna mm -hmm. stop things happening that aren't, you know, that we can't do in real life. But um, I think these uh, these assets and props are gonna really help sort of people um, not notice those and disguise them as well in a bit. Right, and it's good that we have them. Uh, it's awesome that we have these people, these creators making these because it. Before it, we really didn't have anything that could fit as okay. That's Monaco. I mean, we had some of the little Provence houses, but people don't live in those in Monaco. <laughs> right. So moving moving on to the custom theme side of things. Now, I've always been personally using sort of pre-made themes, and recently sort of combining a few together with the the theme mixer. But you made my job a lot easier here by creating a custom theme, which um, I must say really does bring out the Mediterranean vibe. How did you find the theme creation, and is it easier or harder than map creation? And uh, what was the hardest parts of this? Okay, so the theme is the reason why I never got to redoing it, doing a remix of this map, <laughs> because <laughs> my original theme is 
really bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's bright orange and the, the rocks are awful. And、um, so the reason why I was able to do this theme was because of other people who helped me. <laughs>、um, I, I, it's beautiful because、um, it's mostly by a lot of other creators who have shared their. Um, their stuff with us and the community, which is awesome of them. So,、hmm. for example, Ronic sixty nine, the grass and the cliff and the ruined are all come from Springwood, and、uh, th- that's how they get. He, he, he's manages to get this blending, but also the, you know, there's you see little bits of rock pop out here and there.、Hmm. Yes,、um, you do that with alpha、um, textures, which. That. That's a whole different series. Of th- I still don't get it. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so、uh, thanks to Ronix, we have the, a cliff that looks good and the grass and a ruin that all come together really nicely. And all I did was just make it a little more peach,、um, because when you're there, you can see that the rocks, just like the buildings, have this really odd peach tone. Yes.、Um, yeah. And then Tentman.、Uh, He did the building base normal, so、um, when you guys look at a building on the edge on a really steep slope, the part that shows the basement that's by Tentman, and it's stunning. It looks great.、Um, it really is, and it's so important for Monaco as well, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing's、yeah. on flat land in Monaco, so that creation is going to make things look so much more re- realistic. Exactly, and it's again that peach John. I mean, when you go there、uh, in real life, that's the thing that really hits you. Everything is peach. So if you've never been to Monaco, but you're using this theme and go, why is everything pink? It's because it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also,、um, I, I don't know if, what texture I made in this <laughs> because Mark Fire made the water normal and foam normal,、um, and I, I just add a little contrast to them so that the waves have a little bit of a sparkle on.、Hmm. Um, and then Big Bad Nancha did、uh, his. Tile is the originally gray, and then I just changed the color to Monaco.、Um, but yeah, I don't think there's very little that I did. <laughs>、um, just mixed it together because、uh, oh, the oil and、um, or one of them is、uh, looks like lavender fields, and the other one I can't remember, but it's、uh, like it's a it's another color that you can use to paint your landscape. So those I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I really like the lavender. I mean, it's, it's to、yeah. be fair, I, I didn't even think that there was any lavender around Monaco until you pointed out many <laughs> screenshots of it.、And、it's a nice little addition to have in a、mm. theme. Mhm. And、uh, oh, right, I remember. So I did <laughs> the、uh, sky, the lighting, and the sunsets and stuff like that. So yeah. So basically, it's, it's a group, just like the whole project. It's a group project put together as the theme. So.、Um, It's it's not easy to do a theme. That's it, and I think in, it, that's why people, well, quite a lot of people use the theme mixer because technically this、mm-hmm. is a, a published theme mixer, really, isn't it? With all the the big boys、mm-hmm. in, involved, everyone taking their sort of you know putting their experience into to this particular theme, and、uh, the、exactly. results obviously fantastic. Yeah, exactly. It was me going. Can you help here? Can you help <laughs> me with this? Can you help me with this? So yeah, that's it. Yeah, it is a miniature project. And I know that feeling myself because I've done that myself, asking everyone to help me with my assets. So, <laughs> <laughs> works and, out、um, well in the end. <laughs> that's exactly it, indeed. And one thing I actually learned from ourselves communicating and you helping with the map is,、um, I think you're almost a bigger perfectionist than myself, actually, <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to creating. I know there's、uh, many rev- revisions、um, that you. Changed on the map, and there are little little tweaks here and there, which I must、mm. admit, the changes you did made it look even even better.、Mm. Um, I mean, is this something that happens quite regularly in, in your map creations? Do you tend to have a lot of different、um, versions and finally settle one in the end? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess, yeah. When by the time I, it gets to somebody else, I wanted to be. Fun, you know. Yeah. Because that, when I first started the game, I realized, you know. If you subscribe to a map, and then you discover later on after you built so much and spent all these hours, then you're going to be really pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I guess that's what I try and do with,、um, you know, because that happened to me a few times. So,、um, hmm. so if something looks unfinished, like for example the the sea coast, 
um, is just smoothed out and it doesn't isn't exactly like real life, that's because you can't do that in Map Editor. So, yeah. for example, you put up the quays on the, or is that pronounced key? Well, it looks like quay, but whatever. <laughs> um, so that's why you do that in game. Um, you can't do that kind of stuff in Map Editor, but it's as mm, worked over as much as I could do. Um, I'll probably not be satisfied with it still, but <laughs> at some point you have to publish. That's it. And so going back to that that point, um, I mean, in terms of Monaco, have you started building on this new map yet? Um, I'm very eager to do so because I've been in winter for three months. <laughs> <laughs> so I just published at Christmas City, so um, so I'm well and full up and done with winter. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm guessing so, the final question I have for you really now leads on from that is um, what's next for you in terms of map creation and themes? Obviously, like you say, you've just released your beautiful winter um, save. Mm -hmm. um, what's going to be next for you? You're going to have a bit of a rest and work on Monaco or are you going to start getting back into some more map creations? Well, um, to, keep, to keep from getting bored, I usually things so... But uh, something really interesting, it was an idea I had never thought of. Um, by someone in a comment was um, if people could have like a beginning city um, that's just you know basic no 50,000 million mods no uh, 50,000 subscriptions just like a little starter city because the person was mentioning that would be great if it had like a random generator and you said you wanted this size city I think they had in the, in the original sim cities right yes I think they did yeah like a scenario starter wasn't it Right, and so uh, scenarios are really difficult to do for this game. I did one, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but I think I might do that. Uh, have a, a map, of course, but then that map as a um, save game that you can uh, start up with just the basics, with you know, uh, uh, highway infrastructure and road infrastructure that won't make you crazy with so strategically planned not a very big city um just enough so that you don't have you know how many times it gets a, a annoying having to redo water pipes and running the water <laughs> yep. pipes and running this and running that and okay now i can start building the city um so i thought it was a neat idea so i'm gonna give that a shot yeah, I think that's a really good idea. I mean, one one issue I had when I first got the game was that starting point, how to sort of get mm -hmm. things going. Um, and I mean, obviously now I kind of cheat the game. I don't play <laughs> properly. I, I have all the all the mods on. I have unlimited money, etc. But for those more, you know, people involved in playing the game, sort of more vanilla, I think mm -hmm. having a starting city will be a very very good idea and a fun way for people to start and kickstart mm -hmm. their their gameplay really. Yeah, I think that's the biggest frustration is when they start the game and they start on a regular map from, that came with the game, they'll get all that backup and traffic right there in that, in that uh, highway connection. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, uh, yeah, I think it would be good to have something basic that people can then take forward and do whatever they want. Definitely. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time, and obviously a huge thanks for being part of this uh, huge project. And um, sure, thank you. It was uh, really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And the map will be released pretty much as this video is released as well, so everyone can have some fun and build their own Monaco. That's great. Including yourself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll be at it too. <laughs> Excellent. Cheers. Okay. Thanks for having me. So there it is, the first of the podcast, and a very interesting one. I really enjoyed that chat with Mr. Miyagi. I got a lot of interesting information out of him with regards to the map creation and how he became to be so successful with his maps. And it'll be interesting to know your thoughts if it's something you'd like to hear more of from creators in this series. I personally love the fact of hearing sort of how they overcome situations and just working out how their brain ticks when it comes to asset creation. And before we end this episode, we haven't spoken about the LUT for this project. And my word, that's been the hardest thing personally i found to find the best one. I spoke to a lot of big YouTubers, I spoke to Strict Toaster, spoke to Flux, Corralis and a lot of the other guys within the community to sort of find the best looking LUT to really make this Monaco theme pop out. 
and it took a lot of help in the end and I actually asked Creative Dex who in my opinion is one of the best LUT creations and map creators as well to give me a hand and this was the final outcome. So guys, that's pretty much it for episode one. I know there wasn't much in terms of building, but we've now set the scene. You know what Project Monaco is about. You know what the map and theme and loot look like. All that's next is for us to start building. And we're gonna start with one of the biggest parts of Monaco, in my opinion. We're gonna start with the port. So guys, thank you very much indeed. A big shout out to all the creators who are involved in this project. I am truly honoured to have all of you guys on board. And for you guys for also watching. I hope you enjoy the series. We'll try and do this as best we can on a weekly by weekly basis. But as you can probably imagine, some of these episodes are going to take a little bit of time with all the complexities, etc. So we'll see how we go. Look forward to your comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and if you did, think about hitting that sub button. You'll get updates of when my new videos are released. So until then guys, all the best and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks for watching and all the best.